Hey, welcome back to the party. This is episode number two in your C++ series. This video, we are going to start from nothing and build out a small application so you can actually get some experience writing code and understanding that code. So what we will do is we will ask the user a question, get some input, and then respond to that input. So just some experience with input and output inside of C++. So to get started, we are going to be using Embarcadero C++ Builder. This is the sponsor of this series. You can go download their community edition and get started for free. When this opens, you can create a new project and we're going to go with a console application. Hit OK, and then again hit OK. Now when this launches, there's going to be a bunch of stuff open, which you can hit these little pins to hide over to the side, which will just clear things up a little bit. You can see over here in the projects, we have file1.cpp. That is the file we currently have open. That's where we're going to be writing our C++ code. What we can do is actually save this and change the name of the file. I will just call this YouTube. So now we have youtube.cpp and it doesn't make a huge difference, but we can change the target platform by right clicking and add platform and choosing Windows 64 bit hitting OK. Now to get started, I'm actually just going to delete everything and we are going to write this from scratch. A couple of other things, you can hide the projects and you can zoom in right here to make the text a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and start by saying int main and then a set of parentheses so open parentheses close parentheses and then i'll usually hit enter and go down to the next line we will do an open curly brace and then hit enter and you can see it automatically puts the closing curly brace and this is where our code is going to go and we will say return zero now when we want to show something inside of the terminal we will need to include another file. So to do that, you go to the very top and type pound include. And then inside of angle brackets, so a less than sign, we will say IO stream and then close the angle bracket. So the uh, greater than sign. This is going to allow us to use input and output. That's what IO means, input output. And we're going to use another include here, which will be used for working with strings. So we'll say string. Now a string is just a sequence of characters. That's what is going to be given to us from the user. So let's go ahead and go here and we will write a new line and you're going to type std colon colon c out. This is how you write to the console and then you're going to do two less than symbols or left angle brackets and we're going to create a string here so again a string is just a sequence of characters and you define that inside of double quotes so we'll say something like what is your name this is what it's going to look like now at this point you can compile and make sure your code works it's going to ask us to save our project so again I'm just going to call this YouTube it'll compile and it'll pop up for a second and then disappear. So basically it outputs this string and then it's like, oh, our code is done, so we can close. There's a few ways to fix this so that it doesn't automatically close. One of them being to say system and inside of parentheses, you're going to say pause and then a semicolon. So at the end of every single line, we're going to have a semicolon with the exception of when we are using parentheses or curly braces. So inside of the curly braces, every line inside of here, we're going to use a semicolon at the end. And you'll become very familiar when to use semicolons and when not to, so don't stress too much about it now, mainly just copy the code as is. Now when we run this, it'll compile and it says, what is your name? press any key to continue. So this press any key to continue is going to always show up there whenever our code is done running. When you hit any key on the keyboard, it closes. So you'll notice it was all on a single line and the fix for that is inside of these parentheses you can do a backslash n. So this is a special character that's going to be interpreted as a new line. Now when we run, it says what is your name? press any key to continue. 
Cool. Now, a few things before we get that user input, I wanted to mention that we have this std colon colon at the beginning. This is basically saying, hey, where is this C out that we're using coming from? It's coming from the standard namespace or std. It can get a little redundant typing this out and pretty annoying, but it's a good way to prevent any kind of naming conflicts. And we'll talk about that more in the next video and throughout the rest of the series, but I'll show you a shortcut so you don't have to continually type std colon colon before things. So you can delete that and now it's going to be confused. What is the C out? Where does it come from? And up at the top, we can basically say, hey, if we don't specify, we just want this to assume using namespace std semicolon. Now it's going to assume that the C out is coming from the standard namespace and we don't have to prefix it with std colon colon. Now I know I'll get some comments about best practices and everything. This is an easy way to get started. However, as you get more complex applications, this can introduce naming conflicts and we will talk about that more in the next video. So we got a way to display on the console, but how do we get user input? The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to say string name. This is defining a variable called name and a variable allows us to store information. That information can come from the console using C in. And now the angle brackets are going to be pointing the opposite direction. So we're going to say C in name. That is how we're going to take the name from the user and store it in a variable. This will allow us to use it later. So we can say C out name. Now, if you remember after the C out, it doesn't automatically do the new line. So if you wanted to have the new line, well, you can't just type it here because we're not inside of quotes. So the other way of doing this is to do another set of angle brackets and then do the quotes. So that is what it's going to look like. Now let's hit run and what this code will do is it will first ask us for our name. I will say Caleb and it will repeat it back to us. You can see I typed Caleb and it repeats that back. Let's follow the code to make sure we understand. We say, what is your name? We define a variable. This doesn't actually cause any output to show up. Then we allow the user to type some information and we store it in that variable. Then last thing we do is we just output the exact name that they typed to us. We could easily build on this to do different things. So for example, we could add a string in here saying your name is and then a space so it looks nice and then it'll have the name and then we could put a period that would come after the name. And another thing is if you already have the previous terminal window running, it might complain. So you can see we have it here. So we will just X out of that and then run our code again. What is your name? Caleb. And it says your name is Caleb. So that is a very basic example of how to get user input and display it in the terminal. There's a lot of different pieces here, but this is the foundation. These are the building blocks memorize these structures and we will continue to use them throughout this series. I promise you, if this is your first time doing C++ or your first time coding, it does get easier. The concepts will get harder and challenging, but the way you do user input is always going to look something like this. So you start familiarizing yourself with a different way of doing things and you start to understand the language. Just like learning a foreign language, it's not going to come to you overnight. It takes practice and repetition and seeing code being used multiple times. So go through this video again if you need and actually type out the examples. If you're just watching, you're not going to actually put it in your brain for long term use. You need to type it out yourself to get some of that experience. Now, a few more pieces of information that can be good to know, but 
are essential for actually typing and running this code. If you want to understand what's going on behind the scenes, there is a program called a preprocessor that takes these includes, these include directives specifically, and it will include that code in this file, which allows us to use certain things that already exist. That way we don't have to recreate the wheel whenever somebody has already created code for saying, you know, let's write to the console. We don't have to build all that functionality from scratch. It just exists and we can tell the, the preprocessor that we want to include that code with an include directive. Depending on how you compile, you might not need this include string. So if you're running this on Mac or using a different C++ compiler, you may not need to type that at all. There are different C++ compilers and different operating systems. So some of the code throughout the series might not be 100% exactly what you type out if you're running on a different platform or using some different compiler. So if you want to follow along exactly, you'll want to use the C++ Builder software, which I will drop a link down below. That's all I got for this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to talk about more concepts and some potential issues with the way we wrote our code. So nothing major. We're not doing anything super technically incorrect. This is all correct code, but there are some concerns you should know about. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.